this. Oh, precious. Oh, yes. There is nothing. It's only one thing but the blood of Jesus. It's all by the blood of Jesus. What can we wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the flood that makes me white. Why does no, no, ah, at a fount I know nothing. There is nothing. The only thing that can wash away our sins is the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes as white as snow. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh, well, for my pardon is. I see nothing. There is nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this, I believe nothing. The blood, the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the blood that makes me. Why does no, no, ah, at a fount, I know nothing. The blood, the blood of Jesus, there is nothing. There's only one thing. The blood of Jesus, the death, the resurrection, and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This is my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, this is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. And oh, precious is the blood that makes me white, white as snow. No, I I found, I know nothing. And the blood, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We bless you. Yes, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We continue to praise your name. There's nothing, nothing but the blood, your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. The same as what can wash away our sins. There is nothing but the blood of you, Jesus Christ. It's only your blood that can wash away our sins. Your blood, the blood of Jesus. This morning, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you, Jesus Christ, for your death on the cross. Have your way, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There is nothing. That can wash away our sins. But only the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood. My brother, my sister, child of God. Once again I bring you greetings from God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Somebody sang a song that we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching upwards to Zion. The beautiful city of God. Every preparation, everything that as a child of God, every preparation points towards the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One day Jesus will come. <laughs> Whether you believe it or not, it is not what somebody is saying. It is what the word of God is saying. That our Jesus is coming. And he's coming with a reward. 
The Bible says we all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we will give accounts. On that faithful day, on that great day, my brother, my sister, the only thing that can save you is your garment of righteousness. Because the Bible says when the disciples, when you read, look, when you read, look, that chapter 10, Jesus sent the disciples out. They went and they came back and the Bible said they were happy. Why? Because at the mention of the name Jesus Christ, the demons bowed. Everything was bowing. And they came and they were happy. The Bible said they came and told Jesus, Jesus, you won't believe. At the mention of your name, every knee was bowing, demons were bowing, and they were in. But Jesus told them something. Let me go and read it. And you hear, there is a book in heaven. There is a register in heaven. And in that book, only the saints, those who are doing the will of God, it is not those who go to church. It is not those who hold the Bible. It is not those who, who, who preach the gospel. It is those who do the will of God. Those who live a righteous life, live a sanctified life, live a life that pleases the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your name will be written in that book. Hallelujah. Jesus said, do not be happy that they bow to you. But be happy that your name is written in the book in heaven. There is a book in heaven. One day our Jesus will come and he's coming. My brother, my sister, the only way to live a righteous life is to present your body. Live a righteous life. Our body is a living sacrifice. Our body is a living sacrifice. Let me go and read Romans chapter 12. And we will continue that God through his servant told us to live a righteous life. Greetings to you, my brother Daniel Ramel. God bless you. Always watching us all the way from Trinidad. God bless you. God rich bless you. One day, if we don't meet face to face, I believe one day we'll meet in heaven. I, I, I sense that and somebody was laughing. The guy was laughing. That heaven. You think there is heaven? I say, you sit down. You sit down. My Bible tells me. And even if you don't believe what the Bible is saying, go to the YouTube and see how many people are that have encountered Jesus Christ. And everybody is talking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. People have seen it. And yes, you don't believe. If you, uh, Muslims, Christians, blacks, whites, blue, black, all race, Everybody is seeing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you don't believe it. The Bible says they have yes, let them hear what the Spirit says. Not everybody have the spirit of the ear, uh, ear of the Spirit to understand the things of the Lord. My prayer is that you will understand it. This is my prayer for you that somebody will understand that our Jesus will come and He's coming. May His name be praised in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is passing you away. He's passing you away. Our body is a living sacrifice. I started preaching it. And I've been talking about many things. And today, I would like to continue a call to absolute submission. To submit your body, you have to submit it under the authority of the, the heaven. Authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have to submit. The Bible says Jesus, he, 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 Jesus even submitted. And was given a name that was above every name, that is above every name. And at the mention of the name Jesus Christ, every knee bow, every knee bow. Romans chapter 12 and the verse 1. The word of God says, I beseech you therefore, my brethren. Brethren means people that are some of believers. Talking to the believers. Present your body. Say by the message. By the grace of God, that you present your body, the body that God has given to you. My brother, my sister, child of God, listen, that body does not belong to you. It has been rented to you. And so you have to, you have to use it the way God has ordered us to use it. God expects you to use it. Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God lives in you? The Spirit of God nowadays don't live in the, in the temple that is built by hands. He lives in our body. The Spirit of God lives in our body. And one day, 
this body will be resurrected and stand before the judgment seat of Christ and will give accounts. Pray that you will, be, you will understand. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God because it takes the Holy Spirit for us to understand the things of God. In the name, say, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He said, this is a reasonable service. The service that God has called us into as to present ourselves a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. By living a righteous life, we keep on renewing our attitude. You see, somebody said, how can I live a righteous life? My brother, my sister, it is not, it is not your righteousness. It is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You begin to do the will of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. You, you pursue righteousness and you desire it. And purpose within your spirit that you live it. The spirit, spirit of God will help you and you live it. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will live it and you see the glory of God. Yesterday I started talking about what are some of the things we do. That means that we are submitting to God. Yesterday I talked about it. The first thing is salvation. Giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember John chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. To have everlasting life. And so your first point of submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give your life. Give your life to Christ. John chapter 3 and verse 3 says that except a man be born again. He will not see the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ says that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God, which is seek it. And seeking the kingdom of God is seeking Jesus. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. There is no other God. There is no other way. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. Somebody say you don't believe it, you sit down. You sit down. It's only Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved. Our Jesus is coming. The second way to submit to God is through obedience. Through obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. Than the fat of ramp. The fat of ramp. There are many people sitting in the church. I, yesterday I was reading a, a, a message that a, a woman of God sent out by the then uh, uh, I think it's going to take him. He died. And the thing that he wrote concerning money and the kingdom of God. There are many people preachers that think that I mean, there is a slaughter machine. My brother, my sister. You cannot buy the things of God with money. The only thing that you can buy is your heart of righteousness. That is why the Bible says we should seek the kingdom. And it's righteousness and everything will be added up to us. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Let's preach Christ to the people. And tell them to accept Christ. And walk in the newness of their heart. And they will see the glory of God. They will see the glory of God. Let them obey. And when they obey. Heaven will be open up to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. The third thing yesterday I said that the way to submit to God is to learn more about Him. To learn more. God told Joshua the secret to life. And this is one thing. I have run with it and I continue to run it with it until I am called or until Jesus come. He is to abide in the word. God told Joshua, if you want to succeed in that land, if you want to prosper, Meditate upon this word. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Continue to do it. And you see, my glory, in that land you succeed and you, you prosper. My brother, my sister, enough of the lies. Enough of the lies. Enough of the lies. Enough of our ministers and our preachers not telling the way of the Lord. Say, Jesus, he is the only way. Jesus is the only way. One way 
also to submit to God is to share. Submit to God is to share Him between us. There are many Christians. You see, let me go and read Matthew. Let me go and read Matthew. Matthew chapter, Matthew 5. And I'll read verse 13. Somebody hear the word of God. Matthew 5. The Bible says, Ye are the salt of this earth. But if the salt have lost its favor, what well shall it be a salt? It is therefore good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under feet of men. Ye are the light of this world. A city that is set on a hill can never be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put under a brochure, but the candlestick and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Why? My brother, my sister, somebody, if you come to Jesus, the only way to submit to Jesus Christ is for somebody to see Christ in you and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our ways and our lives should match. It should be equal. One thing I pray that people, do you know that people come to the Lord Jesus Christ through our lifestyle more than even the words that we, 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 we preach and speak? Let's share Jesus among ourselves. If we share Jesus among ourselves, then we submit to each other. When the woman at the well, I every day say, one woman testimony, the disciples went into the city. The city, go and read John chapter 4. John chapter 4. The, the disciples went into the city. Nobody followed them to Jesus Christ. But when this woman, a woman that was a prostitute, a woman that had many husbands, a woman uh, that people rejected, when she went into the city and told her story, the Bible said many people followed him. Sorry, followed her to the Lord Jesus. They followed her. They followed the woman. Who I call it one woman testimony. Why? Because her life. Let me go read John chapter 4 and the verse 29. John 4 and the verse 29. And you see, when she went out, John 4 and the verse 29, listen. He said, come see a man who told me all the things that ever I did. It's not this the Christ. They then went out of the city and came unto him. The woman went. This woman went and shared Jesus Christ. There are many Christians they cannot share Jesus Christ. Why? Because you yourself, you have not repented. It's just you are worshiping God with a lip service, but your heart is far away from the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you repent. I pray that we will repent. I every day tell my listeners that when you see me walking in anything, please tell me. Because there are some criticisms. <laughs> there, are, there are some of them is very constructive. It's very constructive. Maybe you yourself don't know what you are doing is saying. We are a pistol to the world. The readers. The readers. That is why many ministers have been lambasted. Because their life and their words are, are, are different. Their words are going north and their life is going south. Let's live a righteous life. Our body a living sacrifice. Present it as a living, holy and acceptable unto God. This is our reasonable service. The Bible says we should not conform to this world. Conforming is being the same as the things of this world. Our Jesus is coming. My brother, my sister, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, one day you leave this earth. I have never seen any man, any woman who argue there is no God and say, I will not die. I will not grow old. I will not die. You sit down. You sit down. It will happen to you without you knowing. It is certain. There are some things on earth. It is certain. You cannot change it. The Bible says, it is appointed unto man who wants to die. And after that, there is judgment. Jesus is coming. Change your life. Repent and walk in righteousness. When you walk in righteousness, hey, heaven will be closer to you. There is no slaughter machine in heaven. 
There is no slaughter machine in heaven. <laughs> Every day tells you. It's only a righteous government. Leave it. Leave it. If you want to hear it, hear it. When you hear the truth, the truth shall set you free. I was listening to a man of God. And they were preaching. <laughs> I, I, I forgotten the way he called it. You saw a Ford car. Uh, you bring a Ford car. And you, you receive. Uh, God will bless you with a, a Mercedes Benz. I said that is a lie. That is a lie. A lie in the pulpit. Share Jesus Christ. Tell them about his, his birth. Tell them about his resurrection. Tell them about, about his second coming. Because if they don't know the first coming, they will never know the second coming. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Use your body as a living sacrifice. Testifying to the glory of God. Jesus met this woman at the well. And started talking. Jesus said, a day is coming, a time that your true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and the truth. She went out and everybody followed her. Why? Because she encountered Jesus Christ. She shared Jesus with other people. Another way of submitting to God is how we treat one another. How we treat one another. How we treat one another. The Bible says, you see, there are many, many, many. I went to Ghana. I went to Ghana. And when I went to Ghana, I was I was going to, I was going to a place. And a man was crying. A man was crying. And I asked the reason why. And he said, come and listen to me. My wife, instead of my wife cooking for me and doing something, helping me in the house. My wife <laughs> just insulted me. Why? Because her prayer time is, 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 is ready. She wants to go to prayer. I cried. The, the, the woman think that because of the prayer and everything, the household is not needed. My brother, my sister. You see, let me tell you. God is first. Your family is second. The church is third. Hear me. If any man of God tells you the church is first, tell the, the man of God that person is a lie. <laughs> that is even why the Bible says if you are a man of God, you cannot take care of your family, you cannot take care of the church. Hear me again. The church, uh, God is first in your life. Your family is second, and the church is third. Any man of God that will tell you I am lying, he don't know his Bible, he don't know the word of God. You cannot go to heaven and live your family. You have to live that. That is why the Bible says we should train out the way our children, the way of the Lord. When they grow, they will never depart. Presented our bodies as a living sacrifice. How can this man follow this woman to the church? I, I, will, I remember I was once preaching in a church, preaching a church in the church of Pentecost. And I told them that the happiest day in my life when my wife caught me my wife called me pastor. Started calling me pastor. That was my greatest day. Because the Bible says charity begins at home. Ministry begins at home. There are some men, there are some women. Whatever you do, they will never see it. But immediately they can see that, yes, my husband, my wife is living a godly life. They will follow you. Some of them, their life is born. Some of them they will not. A man of God was preaching. He says there are some people. Even you cut your head for them, they will eat it and tell you greetings to you, Reverend Roslyn Archery. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Amen. I am talking, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. God, your body should should draw people on the things that you do. You have to win souls. If I go and preach. And I come back and live another life. And Jesus don't know me. Jesus don't know me. My prayer is that we will we'll live a life that Jesus. Let me talk about the steps to submit yourself. There are steps to submit yourselves. Uh, again, we are called absolute total submission. To submit, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Your body, you have to humble it. You don't use it. 
you go to the Twitter, you, you even regret. Now nakedness has become a fashion. Do you, you don't see an advert where a woman will not show her nakedness. We buy new phones and cover it. But the body has become something that we do. Shame, shame, shame. And the world is adoring it. It is in the pulpit. It is everywhere. We want to give accounts. One day we will give accounts whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, you give accounts. I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody will understand and live a holy life, a righteous life. I will every day tell you, me, I will not preach anything about, except the Lord Jesus Christ. Because this is what we are called. Whether you are a prophet, whether you are a pastor, apostle, we are all called to preach Jesus Christ. One day you stand before the judgment seat of Christ and you give accounts. Job chapter 33 verse 4. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord has made me and the breath of the almighty God has given me life. God has made you. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell in thereof. Everybody we belong to God. God created us. And so, one day you stand before the judgment seat. If your pastor is not telling you, I will tell you. If somebody is not telling you, I will tell you. But the sad thing that Jesus Christ said, the light have come into the world. But men, we love darkness because our deeds, nobody will hear. Imagine I came on the radio and I, I stripped myself naked. You will see thousands and millions of people. But here we present the good news of Christ, nobody will hear. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ that somebody you begin to listen. Our Jesus is passing your way. Jesus is passing away. The first one to submit to God is to submit your heart. The heart, the heart, the heart. The heart. Your heart. Submit your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. The heart that God has given to you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll be able to submit. John, uh, sorry, Jeremiah 17 and the verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can understand? Submitting to God. So the way we submit our body to submit our heart to God. Everything. Submit it. Submit your heart to God. Verse 10 said, The Lord searches the heart. And test the mind to give every man according to his ways. According to his ways. A way to submit unto the Lord. My prayer is that somebody that is listening to us, you are able to submit unto God. Submit your heart. One way to submit to God is your heart. Bring your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence. From it flows the springs of life. Life springs from your heart. Everything flows from your heart. My brother, my sister, child of God, Jesus is coming. Everything points toward the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody sang, so have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? And have you washed the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? And are they white as snow? Because He will come. And the Bible says, our deeds, our works will follow us. The thing that we are doing. You think that you think that nobody don't see. You think that don't, nobody don't see that you are you are cheating on your wife. Nobody don't see that you are cheating with another man's wife. Nobody don't see. Some God sees it. God sees it. When a thief is going to steal, he looks at the right and looks at the left. Look forward and look backwards. The only thing they don't do, they don't look upwards and see that he who sits on his throne. Sees everything and everything is recorded on that judgment day, on that faithful day. And what this will follow us. Present your body, the body that God has given to you. My brother, my sister, present it. Psalm 34 and verse 18. The Bible said, The Lord is nearer to the broken hearted and save the crushed in spirit. Those whose heart is broken, a way to submit to God is to submit your heart. Let the word of God fill your heart. Fill your heart with the word of God. Our Jesus is coming. The heart belongs to God. Again, the heart. The heart motivates us to make decisions for our lives and in order for it to be transformed, to have a good conscience 
and a sincere faith, we need to submit to God for renewal. It motivates us. The heart is everything. Let's go and read Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 26. And God said that he will give us a new heart. Ezekiel chapter 30. Ezekiel 30. 36. And I read verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I read verse 26. Let's hear the word of God. Let's submit our heart unto God. When we submit absolute submission, we are called to submit. Absolute submit. There is things that we are called to do. Absolute submit. Absolute separation and absolute sanctification. The body. Oh dear. You don't sit down and argue and have, have argument. Every, some, there are some people, they have every, every argument for, for every excuse. Oh my church. Go into the Bible and see Revelation. There is no church. The only churches that God through his servant wrote letters to, almost all of them, their deeds and their words was not pleasing. The only people that stand before God is the saints, those who live a righteous life, a holy life, a pleasing life. We are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We marching upwards to Zion. A beautiful city of oh God. Can we love that love of the Lord? And let your joy be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thou uh, surround the throne. And thou uh, surround the throne. We are marching to Zion. A beautiful, beautiful Zion. We march in upwards to Zion, a beautiful city, a city of God. We are marching to Zion, a beautiful city of God. And there our Jesus will come, and we will show up. One way to, to submit to God, the first step is to submit your heart, your heart. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. He says, Then will I sprinkle clean waters upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. I will talk about these things and I explain the things that we do, that the body we contaminate the body. Verse 26 A new heart also will I give you, a new spirit will I put in you, and I will take the, away the stony heart out of your, your, your flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit within you. And I'll cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why the Bible says, If anybody be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are past and everything becomes new. As you accept that Christ Jesus Christ, the spirit of God. I call it the indwelling presence of God. The indwelling presence of God. And that indwelling presence of God. Help us to bear the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit, we, we, we see it. Hallelujah. We see the fruit of the Spirit. It's in the Word of God. Let me go and read Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. And I'll read verse 22. The Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. Uh, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with it affection and with it lust. Those who are of Christ, those who live in righteousness. And so when you accept Christ, you submit your heart to Christ. When you submit to Christ and he gives you a new heart and a new, uh, a new spirit, then the presence of God, I, I call it indwelling presence of God. That is why, immediately, that is why Jesus said, if you, you are not born again, you cannot see. But to enter, except water and the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, that will lead us. Your body is a living sacrifice. My brother, my sister, your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God expects you to use it. There are some people, they don't, they don't, when they go to the house of God, hey, it's because God is there. They want to keep everything in order. But their body, they cannot keep in order. You are lying. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. 
God is no mock. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God. The fruit of the Spirit. When you read verse 19, he says, The works of the flesh manifest, the, uh, which are adultery. Adultery meaning that cheating. A man cheating with another another man's wife. Uh, a woman cheating with another man's husband. Recently, there was a pastor who said, Any man of God will have to marry too. Evil. Evil in the pulpit. Evil in the pulpit. Right? Every day says, When I read Daniel, and Daniel said, When we see the abomination that caused remedy, standing in the holy place. Hey, nowadays, go to the holy place. You see, even, even uh, bishops, um, um, some of them, you come to America, they hide them. Some of them, men are marrying men, and women are marrying women. A sin. Lesbianism and gayism is sin. Go and tell them, a sin. We don't hate them, we love them. And that is why we tell them the mind of Christ for people to know that your body is a Holy Ghost temple, and you use it right. You don't, you don't misuse it and think that I am sitting in the house of God. Don't let anybody deceive you. You, can, you cannot mock God. Neither can you deceive yourself. Whatever you sow, you reap. You sow to the flesh. Out of the flesh, you reap corruption. Sow to the spirit, you reap internal life. The Bible says that adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, various emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, enviness, murder, drunkenness, the reverence of such of all which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody will understand that, that when you walk in these things, you will never, you will never. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 said, Know you not. That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous. And no, nobody will hear. And then you say it. They will say, who are you to judge me? Let me tell you. Any man of God. Any Christian. Who will begin to use. Who are you to judge me? That man of God is backsliding. No, he has backsliding. He's already backsliding. Because sin is sin. Sin is sin. And when somebody tells you your life that you are living is sin, the person is not judging you. The person is telling you the right thing. Because the Bible said there is therefore no condemnation for those who live in Christ, those who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And so immediately you walk according to the flesh, there is condemnation. You are not punished, but you are condemned. If you change your mind, Christ will accept you. Jesus said it, that come unto me, all ye that livest in a heavenly laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. I'll take it. He said, my yoke is easy, and my, and my burden is light. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody, anybody, not specific people, everybody on this earth, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, on their faithful day, he stood and, uh, and shouted, Everyone who tastes come unto me, and out of your belly will flow living waters. Jesus is for everybody. But except those who believe in him, those who will accept him. The first step to submit your body is submitting your heart. Uh, Jesus, God, through uh, Ezekiel, promised that you give us a new heart and a new spirit. And that is why Jesus told that it was expedient for me to go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. When he comes, he will abide with you. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. In our dispensation, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. My brother, my sister, submit unto the Lord. And you will never. We are called to absolutely submit our body. Proverbs 28 and the verse 14 says, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardened his or her heart will fall into calamity. There are people who have hardened their heart. I don't believe God. I don't believe anything. You sit down. You sit down. You sit down. You sit down. And continue to say that you don't believe. You don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in anything. 
One day, our Jesus will show up. Sorry, these days, my, I don't know if my light, my radio, the radio station is giving me a problem all the, all the time. My line have to go off and have to call and call and call and call. Those on the radio, those who are watching us on the radio, forgive us. You forgive me. Hallelujah. He said, Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always. And whoever had in his heart will fall into calamity, danger. And so, live in a righteous life. My brother, my sister, live in a righteous life. Continue to live in righteousness. Don't harden your heart. Psalm 101, verse 4. He said, Preserve your heart. He said, A preserved heart shall be far from me and will know nothing of evil. Those who preserve their heart, those who live a righteous life, those who live a faithful life, God is always looking for such people. My brother, my sister, your body a living sacrifice. Your body a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. You are called to absolutely submit to God. A scripture that I pray that will, I will be able to live is Matthew 5 and the verse 8. The Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Those who heart is pure. Those who heart is pure. I was listening to a man of God and say, uh, I, I was better him. Then he was saying that at times God can be far from you, but because because He wants to use you for the people, He will continue to maintain the anointing on you so that people will come to the Lord. And that is why He says that at the end of the day, Matthew seven, many will stand before God and say, "I did this with your name. I did this with your name," and He will tell you, "Get away from me, you that did not do what is right." The Holy Spirit that God has given to us will impress upon your soul. If you are a child of God and you walk in sin and you don't have the conviction of the Holy Spirit, there's something wrong. I, at times I ask myself, the men of God that stand in the pulpit and insult and wickedness, I ask them, do they serve a different God that we serve? Because my God, hey, you cannot walk in sin. You cannot get closer to sin. If, I, if any sin comes into my life, I am not comfortable even to preach. I am not comfortable. Pray in the name of Jesus that we live a righteous life. The Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You have to trust God. The way to submit is trusting God with all your heart. And you do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And the Lord will direct your path. Jesus is passing your way, a child of God. One way to submit unto God. Let's bring our heart. Submit our heart. Your body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to totally and absolutely submit it unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit it. Many people don't understand. They don't understand. And that is why anybody can, can you can walk outside anyhow. You can pierce the body anyhow. And you don't have. You are condemned. You are not judged. But if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will receive you. Again, He will receive you. The arm of the Lord is open. And God is calling everybody. Uh, the message of the cross has gone out. And everybody, humble yourself and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to Him, He will save you. Hebrews 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of the soul, and not the spirit, the joint of, and the marrow. Descending the thoughts and the intention of the heart. And so the word of God is the only thing that can bring the heart, the things of the heart out. And tell you, every way of the man is right in his own. But it is the Lord that weighs the heart. It is the Lord that weighs the heart. My brother, my sister, child of God. One way to submit to God is to submit your heart. It's a step, the first step is to submit your heart. That is why the Bible says when we hear the word of God, we should not harden our heart. There are many people that God has calling them, but they were rejected. There is only one person that was on the cross that when at the point of death was able to accept Christ Jesus. That was the thief. The Bible says that he realized that he was the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Remember me. We have done not this man have done nothing wrong. Only remember me, Jesus said, You'll be with me in paradise. There were two. 
The distance between the two of them was the same. Do you know the, the two of them went to the cross with the same condemnation? They were all thieves. They were all thieves. And the, the distance between them and Jesus was the same. And they all have the equal opportunity to make the same decision. But one made the right choice. Your choice will either lead you to heaven or hell. Don't let anybody deceive you that, that uh, there, uh, there is a place. It's only two. Either you are going to heaven or you are going to hell. Revelation 3 and the verse 15 said, The lukewarm, God, Jesus said he will spit them. The lukewarm don't have a place in heaven. And so the lukewarm and those who don't live right, they are going to hell. And those who live a righteous life are going to heaven. Let me tell you the mind of Christ. And live a righteous life. You have to submit your body. There is no other place. Because the world, you see in this world, right now, everybody, every man of God, many of them, about 99.9% .9 of the men and women of God are rushing from the gains in the gospel. They have come to the Lord for what they will gain. But they have not come to the Lord Jesus Christ for what God can use their life. I pray that is all I need. That God, every day, now my question I ask, what can you use my life for? Use it so that I can win. The Bible says, whoever loses his life for me will gain it. And whoever gain it will lose it. Lose your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Your body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You one day give accounts. The second step to submit to God is <laughs> your selfish ego and motives. We'll continue that Monday. We'll continue this. We want to pray. We have, to, we have time to pray. A way to submit, to submit your soul and to submit your mind. These things you have to submit it to God. If you want to submit, remember as a child of God, a Christian, you are called to total submission you are called to total humbleness humble yourself under the lord so that he will direct your path you don't have your choices there are many men and women of god they are trying to to, to turn the bible to suit their life they are trying and then they will say tell us when the white men brought the gospel they deceived us if they even if they deceived us don't you have, don't don't you know how to read the bible do somebody teach you how to read the bible do somebody teach you Read it, meditate upon it, and let the Spirit of God lead you. Nobody is deceiving you. The Word of God is true. The reason why men hate the truth, nobody wants to live a righteous life. Nobody wants to live it. Nobody wants to live a righteous life. Even, even the pastors. I have seen many pastors. When I started preaching, many pastors call me. The way you preach, nobody will come to your church or nobody will follow you. I say, I don't care about the number of people that will follow me. I care about the number of people that I can lead to heaven. Even if I can lead one person to heaven, glory be to God. Because the Bible says in Luke 15 that if a man have a hundred sheep and one is missing, he will go and look for that one. And when he finds it, he will come home and rejoice. The same thing, when the soul repent, heaven rejoice. The only thing that makes heaven happy and angels rejoice is when the soul is born. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that my brother, my sister, you know that the only way to life is Jesus Christ. Three things that you cannot do without. There's only three things that you cannot do without on earth. One is the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that without the shedding, there is no remission of sin. So the blood of Jesus brought to remission, forgiveness. And the third, second thing is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Somebody asked me, <laughs> who created God? I said, listen to me. The Bible tells me in the beginning, God, how he began, I don't know. <laughs> who made, created God? I don't know. Uh, where is God? I don't know. But listen, we believe it by faith. That is why the Bible says, with that faith, and he's there, you step out. <laughs> Let me tell you, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith, believe in God. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and the verse 2, the Bible says, by faith, the elders receive good report, believe he is there, he is God. 
How he, how, how he created himself, I don't know. How he came, it's all mystery. His mystery is hidden. And with this mind, you cannot understand. Believe in him, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you shall be safe. Dear what did he? He will one day come. We have tested it, we have tested it, and we have tried it, and we know that the word of God is true. We are believing, and we have encountered the Lord Jesus. If you believe the devil is there, why don't you believe God is there? This world will come to an end. One day, it's coming to an end. Except the Lord, your God. And you find salvation for your soul. Jesus is passing your way. Hallelujah. Let me lead somebody to Christ and we'll pray. Say, Lord Jesus, today I, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Father, your word says, you came for your own. But the own receive you not. As many that receive you, them that believe in your name, you gave them power to become your child. Your children, as I have accepted you, may you order my steps. May your spirit, the newness of your spirit abide in me. The spirit that abides, that brings your, your presence, that brings the fruit. May it dwell in me. Until you come or call me from this earth. Every true Christian that submits his or her body unto Christ, the, the Spirit of God dwells in you and you bear the fruit of the Spirit. Automatically, it will come out. You don't struggle. But by living a righteous life, the fruit of the Spirit will come out. And so, so, so if you are living, you are living a double life, you cannot please God. Try it as possible. The only way to do is to allow Jesus to take us all control. Is to, get, to submit this body. Because the body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our youth are missing. Find a church. And I will always tell you, there are some churches God has never been into that church before. Don't, don't, don't listen to how they talk. Don't listen to how they... There are some churches, it's like a cemetery. Everything is dead over there. Go to a place that you feel the presence of God, the Spirit of God. You cannot sit down in your sin. Let me tell you a story. I went to preach in a church. Went to preach in a church. And I saw a husband and a wife. Like it was like they were fighting among themselves. They were fighting among themselves. I almost got confused. I almost got confused. I almost got confused. Because I don't know why. And so, I, 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 I decided to turn my attention from them. And preach the gospel. Immediately I finished, the wife ran to me. Pastor, have I come to you telling you anything? I said, hey, I don't know you from uh, Adam. I don't know you from anywhere. I don't know you. He said, my husband says that you, you, I came to tell you everything you are preaching. That's what is happening in our home. I told the husband, man, listen. That is why the Bible said, God, God, the Spirit of God will bring to you. Know, some of the things at a time God God will bring your your life. You go to a place where the Holy Ghost begin to reveal your sin, because you cannot find God where sin is. You go to a church where the Spirit of God is, that you find salvation for your soul. Because whether you like it or not, heaven is real, hell is real. So long as death is real and you die, it is certain. You don't want to hear about it. We, do, we are not telling you you are going to die. We are telling you it is there. And so prepare for it. And that is why we tell you that it is there. Prepare for it. And Jesus talked about the five virgins and the ten virgins. The five were foolish and five. Prepare. Our oh, Jesus will come. God bless you. Let's enter into a time of prayer. We are praying. Begin to thank God. We are thanking God. Open your mouth. The message without prayer is not complete. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank God. Open your mouth and thank God for the word of God. The Bible says the word of God cometh not in vain, but to fulfill a purpose. God has a purpose for sending his word. The Bible says, Peter said, there is no name given unto man or death to be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, 
the stone that was rejected has been a cornerstone. His name is Jesus Christ. There is no name. There is no name on earth. He is the resurrection and life. Jesus is the resurrection and life. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. We are thanking God. We are blessing the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 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 Somebody thank God and bless the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Just thank him. <coughs> thank God. Thank God. Bless the name. Yes, bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless his name. His name is the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are praying. There are many people that love the Lord. They love the Lord. I remember when we were growing, we had a friend. We had a friend who loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. But anything you find him, you find him in sin. One day he came. And my brother, I remember my brother asked him. And he was joking. And he was joking. My brother, I will not say what he said because it's not called more lawful. Almost right. But all I want to tell you that there are some people that love the Lord. But because of this world, we are praying. Anything that holds your life, that is fighting. You see, I every day tell people it's purpose. Your purpose should motivate you. And again, what you decide to leave or stop will, this, uh, will determine what God will bring into your life. Uh, you have to purpose within yourself. You have to determine, Daniel said, I will not defile myself with this meat and this food. And the Bible says God renewed his, uh, his strength. And so what you determine to do or to leave, walk away from what you de decide to walk away from will determine what God will bring. I every day tells you, God will not exalt you uh, over your last disobedient. God will not. <laughs> we was in grace, grace. You sit down. You sit down. Continue in the grace. And, and, and I heard a man of God preaching grace and I said, have you forgotten that the Bible says we should work our own salvation with fear and trouble? Work it out. We are praying in the name of Jesus that God should help us. It is the grace of God, the strength of God that will help us. Will help us. And that some of the things that we go through, we do with our lives. We are praying in the name of Jesus. African Christianity, there are many people in the church, they want to do the right thing. But sin, situations, situations, you don't have any excuse. My brother, my sister, you don't have any excuse because our Jesus is coming. And he has his word. If you don't come in our time, the set time that heaven has set, which nobody knows, he will come. And everything point towards the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One day you come. Open your mouth and begin to pray that God help me. Help me. The Bible says that the Lord is nearer to the broken hearted. And those who have a contrite spirit, the Lord will not forsake. Those who are his broken, those who are humble, those who submit their heart unto God, he is ready. Open your mouth and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present our bodies, we present ourselves before you. You have made us to understand that we are called to total and absolute submission, to submit our bodies unto you, to live as a living sacrifice, not death sacrifice, a sacrifice that is living. Live a holy life, a righteous life. You always say this is our reasonable service, the service that we have called into yes, to live a righteous life. We pray in the name of Jesus. Anything, everything of this world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of this world, anything that is waging war against our lives, against our destiny, against our Christian life, against we pray in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray with us. Open your mouth and pray with us. Open your mouth and begin to pray as God, that God, I want to live a righteous life. I want to live a faithful life. I want to do your will. I want to do it. Help me. Help me. Help me. It is not by might. It's not by power. But by the Spirit, saith the Lord, this mountain shall be removed. The mountains of iniquity. The mountains of wickedness. The mountains of the enemy.
family that is causing you to live a double life today surrender your life surrender everything unto God pray and say Lord Jesus unto you I surrender unto him I freely give I will ever love you and trust you pray in the name of Jesus my brother my sister hope you mother pray with us we are praying in the name of Jesus we are praying that God help me to live a righteous life everything sin of the past anything that I do anything that my body I use my body that is not righteous anything that I listen I surrender my life hope you mother my brother my sister you are called to freely and willingly serve the Lord present your body nobody will force you but when you don't do it at the end of the journey on earth you will stand in condemnation you will stand before the judgment seat of Christ remember the Bible says that those who are in the flesh cannot please God those who use their body any heart can anyhow cannot please God open your mouth and pray we are praying in the name of Jesus my brother my sister pray pray with us pray that God help me Jesus help me help me to live a righteous life help me to do your will help me to do and live in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, Rakabo Jeti Bandi de Bara, Papandi Zandere Borunda, Maya Kanturo Borunda Briadaba, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, my brother, my sister, somebody, I want us to pray this scripture. I want us to pray Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. We want to pray that, that prayer. We want to pray that prayer. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. The Bible says we should seek first the kingdom of God and the righteousness. And everything will be added unto us. I ever tell you the kingdom of God is principle. Don't let any man of God lie to you. I read what Kenneth Hagin wrote. He, you see, Kenneth Hagin, they started when they wanted to build the schools. And with Ora Robert, they started prosperity ministry. And I've crashed them, Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland and Clifford Dollar, and all of them comes from there. And they are preaching, and many people thinking that there is a slaughter machine in heaven. I pray in the name of Jesus. We are not here to condemn anybody, but we are here to preach the truth. When I read his last word, when he called them, and if you have, I have, I have the message. I can send it to you. If you're a preacher, be careful. The things you preach, I, every day tells you that uh, the church I used to go, if anybody who be rich, the church continue to be rich while the congregants be always are poor, 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 because uh, we are not told the truth. The reason why God gave Abraham a lamb to sacrifice was Abraham's obedience. Abraham was obedient. The reason why, why Solomon sacrificed, Solomon sacrificed because Solomon was humble and knew that. And the Bible says when he sacrificed and everything, God came from heaven, fire came from heaven, and God was happy. And so you don't sacrifice in order to receive. I am giving a, a, a prophet who said that bring, go and bring your retirement. I was going to build a, a billionaire's club. They are evil. They are evil. They are evil. You go and take your retirement. And with joy come and so. You will retire with that and die in poor. You will retire dying poor. You don't learn from it. They are evil. They are not of God. They don't have. We are praying. The only thing that we seek the kingdom and you live the righteousness. The Bible says everything. Automatically, heaven will stand. The eye of the Lord is running to and fro. All that God, God wants to show Himself strong for the righteous people, those who heart is perfect. God is still doing it. I am not saying it is not good to offer. The Bible says that whoever gives, gives according to his own heart and what is willing. Open your mouth and begin to pray the Lord. 
I pray that as I have seen the kingdom, help me to live the righteous life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and let's pray. We are praying in the name of Jesus. We are praying the prayer of Matthew 6 and the verse 33. Jesus said we should seek the kingdom. It's righteousness and everything. 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 Everything includes healing. Everything includes breakthrough. Everything includes. Everything is everything. Everything is in it. Everything is in it. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, pray the Father. I pray the prayer. A word of some. Uh, uh, Matthew says in the verse 33. I want to seek you. I want to live a righteous life. I want to do it. Help me. Let your spirit help me to do it. Uh, that you see the glory of God. The Bible says when you begin to lead and you obey the word of God, the blessing will come and overtake you. You go out in blessing. You come out in blessing. You read. You read. <laughs> the Bible said in that year, in that year, <laughs> Isaac sown and reap a hundredfold. And uh, what did Isaac do? He sown, he went before he was blessed. Isaac sown before he was blessed. <laughs> there, there is no gimmicks in heaven. I, every day said a lazy Christian, a lazy Christian will sit in the house uh, without working. Open your mouth and pray. Raka bande de boronda ria kadaba. E papa ndisa bande de boro. E mante de boro kadaba. Shente de me. Antadaba. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. E pray in the name of Jesus. Raka da bo shente de me. E papa nda zibronda da ba. E pa zanto no borondi kadaba. Ante de boronda ria kadaba. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Pray that God, let me live a righteous life. Let me live a holy life. Let me do the will of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yesterday I saw, I saw a tip. Let me address it. I saw a woman, a woman in Ghana. Uh, that was a video that going out. It says 7 a.m. in the morning. People were praying. People were praying. And this woman took a video and said that that is the reason why Ghana is not, uh, Africa is destroyed. Who told you? Who told you? If the person prays 7 a.m. in the morning and have to, have to go to work at 8 o'clock, do you know? What was the woman doing? What was that woman doing? Was that woman also working? You see how, how ignorant people are. People think that it is prayer that is destroying Africa. Who told you? It's evilness, evil, evil that is destroying Africa. Evil, wickedness. It's wickedness. Because one person would take what belongs to millions of people. From the young to the old. If we live in integrity, my brother, my sister, prayer is good. Prayer is good. If you pray right, you'll receive it. I every day tell people, if you don't pray through, you'll never pray through. If you don't pray through, you never pray through. But you don't pray and sit down. One thing I will not judge is somebody's prayer. But if you pray and you go and work, you will see the fruit of it. If you pray and you sit down, man, I will not fall from heaven. When you see that woman that took the tape, I just asked him, the soft grant, I want to ask, hey, what was she doing at that 7 a.m.? Was she working? Was she had time to take a picture that the people were praying 7 a.m. in the morning? You yourself is not working. You are certain that that is the reason why Ghana is not working. It's not good Africa. It's everything is about prayer. When they see people pray, they get angry. If oh, no Christian should share that tape. When you tell you see that woman, tell that woman that she should go and repent. She should go and repent. I don't wonder. Most of them are evil. They are demons. They hate prayer. If somebody prays 7 a.m. in the morning. Do you know the time they will go to work? 8 a.m. They will go to work. Me, after I finish, somebody sent me a message. Stop what you are doing and go to work. I work. I'm a, an engineer by profession. I work. I work within the engineering field. I work. From here, I'm going to work. I, I am not a lazy man of God. And so when you see me preaching, you, do, you don't think that the only thing I do is preaching the word of God. The word of God has become fire in our bones. Do you know the time I slept? I slept 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in American time. 2 a.m. I was still struggling. And before I woke up, somebody had to call me, the pastor, your time is up. 
You have to call me. Say your time is up. I, I, I slept only two hours. But from here I'm going to work. When you see that woman, tell that woman she needs to repent. She needs to repent. Africa is not being destroyed by, by prayer. Africa, yes, there are some men of God, they are distorting the message. They will stand in judgment. But wickedness is, is, is in the pulpit. Is, is, the wickedness in the church is in, is, is in the presidency. Is in, is, is, the chiefs are even wicked. The chiefs, how can a chief sell two, two lands, two, uh, one land to about seven people? It's, it's in the chiefs. We want to pray. The reason why I am addressing this is that because when it comes to prayer, when you talk about prayer, I get angry. Because the only thing that can destroy is a righteous man praying. The demons cannot start. <laughs> you don't know how they fear. We are praying. Sorry for me going there, but let me address it. I saw the video. Somebody sent it to me. And people were sending it to me. And that, and, uh, you see, the good message nobody will share. Nobody will share these messages. Nobody will share our messages. We are praying. We want to pray. I'm a brother, my sister. You see, your prayer will not be in vain. As a child of God, stand up and, and go out and find something to do with your hand. That the word of God will be true in your life. That the word of God will be true. Don't sit down. You are Muslim, you work, you earn. You are Christian, you work, you earn. Because God, the Bible says, after God created, he, he, he said, have dominion, subdue the earth and multiply it is a command god gave to every human being and so when you submit the earth you till the land you receive isaac was great why because he saw the bible saying that year he sold he went we are praying the bible says one way to submit is our heart we are praying that the heart that god has given to us the bible says the heart is desperately wicked out of it flows all the issues of life we pray that we will be able to commit our heart. The heart and the mind is connected. Everything that runs from the heart goes through the mind. That is why the Bible says we should not conform to this world, but be renewed, <laughs> transformed by the renewal of our mind. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Our God help us. Help us that our heart will be able to offer it unto you. And we will live a righteous life. Live a righteous life. My brother, open your mouth and begin to pray. Just open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray that God, we pray in the name of Jesus, that I will be able to live a righteous life. There is no other gospel. There is no other ministry. There is no other church apart from the church of righteousness. People live in. Live it. Open your mouth and pray. My brother, open your mouth and begin to pray and say, Lord, I want to live a righteous life. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastors. Pray for them. Those who are wickedly, those who are selfish, using the gospel for their gains. May they, they encounter Jesus Christ. When they encounter Jesus, nobody will preach to them. Hey, Paul encounter Jesus. Paul encounter Jesus. There are some religion, even when they are killing, they are calling the name of God because they don't know. When they encounter Jesus Christ, they will leave their sin and run and begin to seek for righteousness. It's knowing Jesus and encountering Jesus. Pray that God help me to know you. Help me to know you jesus help me to offer my body as a living sacrifice help me to submit my heart unto you a heart a faithfulness Open your mouth and pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Roka da bojen de rebe. E papan de zebran de corono riadaba. In the name of Jesus. E ban de rebo. Rika da bojen de rebe. E ta bojan ta branda sen de rebe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let's pray this prayer down. Some people, they are living righteous. There are some people they are doing the will of God. There are some people they are working very hard. But yes, the things are not going well with them. Who want to stand in the gap? And maybe you need healing. Maybe you need a breakthrough. Maybe you need the divine hand of Jehovah. And God gave me a revelation last night. People who were in difficult situation that were calling on the name of the Lord. When I woke up and I sat on the bed, I said, God, help these people. I may not know you, but uh, all I uh, maybe you need the divine hand of Jehovah. You want God to come into your situation. Remember when God 
do it for you. Don't don't tell your back to God. We want to pray that the hand of God, the hand of God, the power of God everywhere that you are, God will stretch forth his hand and touch you everywhere. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray that God, my situation I presented before you. I present my life before you. I present it before you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. We pray for you. We pray healing for you. We pray breakthrough for you. There are people who are seeking for jobs. There are people that they go out. The enemy is fighting their handiworks. We pray that whoever fight you, let God fight against that demon, that witch. Hey, spirits, you cannot convert any spirit. They are witches. They are, uh, we pray against that spirit. We pray, pray that Father, any demon, any witch, any spirit that fight against your life, fight against your destiny, fight against the word of God for your life. Fight it. May the Lord fight. Uh, David prayed the prayer in Psalm 35. Say content with them that content with them. Fight against them that fight against me. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let God fight them everywhere in the name of Jesus. 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 Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Our time is fast fed. So let's end here. Again, my brother, my sister, live a righteous life. Don't let anybody deceive you. Seek Jesus and seek everything that is in Jesus. There is no other gospel. The eye of the Lord continues to run to and through. All that God is seeking is righteous. Hey, every promise in the Bible is about the righteous, about the just. Every promise of God. And so don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that, oh, come and do this. Come and, uh, I am not saying giving, but I have seen that many people are deceived. Many people. Some, some people can even sell the everything. And for, for and while these men get richer and richer, whilst people are suffering, study the word of God, submit yourself. May the Lord bless you all. In Jesus' name. God bless you, Papa. Papa, God bless you. Bless you all. Bye bye. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, our, our time for the radio is on because they have to listen to the news far from Ghana. And also, let me say thank you for everyone. Please, when you join us, share for us. If, if you can share on your Facebook, I know it is very hard. The true messages find it difficult to penetrate because nobody wants to share it when you preach the true gospel. And so a pastor told me, nobody will listen to me. And some, another pastor told me that why do I I, I make the, the word of God? I have to I have to loosen it. I have to loosen it because because uh, we all have sinned before. I say yes, I have sinned before. I am a, I, I am a, I was a sinner, but listen, I have seen the way to the Lord that God don't joke with sin. And so there are many things that people tells us because they they know that if you preach the truth, nobody will share. Share for us. And the Lord will bless you. God bless you. Let me thank every day one of the people who stand with us. Because to preach the truth and get one person is very difficult. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, uh, my uh, brother pastor, pastor, let me tell you, Daniel Raman, Ramila from Trinidad. God bless you. God bless you for watching us all the way from Trinidad. And sharing for us. God bless you. May God fulfill every heart desire. Every desire of your heart, may the Lord fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. And you let me thank my brother, Eric White. God bless you, brother and woman of God. My miss of war, uh, Rosie Notcher. God bless you. Let me thank uh, my sister. My big sister is always on sister. Uh, this is Adelaide. God bless you, Adelaide. God bless you. God bless you always standing with us, your brothers, and uh, preaching the gospel. We love you with the love of God. God bless you. And let me not forget to thank my brother and uh, the wife, Mami Joseph and Benji Krantin, and also for Krantin. God bless you for all standing with us. There are many people that are watching us, uh, that are watching us. We want to thank everybody. There are some names that are not coming. But yes, uh, we know, see that there are many. Stella, 
Rachel, God bless you, one of God. And the people that are watching us, there are many names I cannot see them, but forgive me if I don't mention your name. We love you, men and women of God. Uh, there are few people that come and I see you. That is why I cannot mention all names. Yet I love you with the love of God. God richly bless you, everyone that is watching us. And also Vivian, I see a name over here, Vivian. Vivian Kisi, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. And yeah, yeah, woman of God, God bless you and everybody. God bless you. Oh, God bless you for watching us. Please share our message for us. We will we, we, from Friday. Sunday we are in the church. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we are on the radio. And so on the radio, in the Facebook, we see you. Uh, Monday, God bless you. Bye.